sure it, it really made his day. I just showed him my official list that uh, Pat Fitzgerald at Northwestern, I, I was listing my five best coaches in college football. Uh, and now that Chip Kelly's out, I put Bill Snyder at number five. Is this the highest honor of your career, your number four? Without a doubt. And I haven't earned a lick of that. So <laughs> I, I appreciate the, You, say, uh, you the remind praise. yourself of who'd you say? The artist formerly known as Prince. Why is that? I haven't done a lot of good things since the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> he was a former All-Big Ten player. He does a great job. So here's the top 20 release today. Uh, I yellowed the teams I think are the two best. Um, I thought Oregon actually... I really thought Oregon was the second best team in the country last year, but our system in college football means if you miss a field goal by three inches to Stanford, which is also a great team, you're out. Um, does this look about right? Yeah, yeah. You're, by the way, you're 22nd, which is unbelievable. The the restrictions you have. Well, I don't know about that. Oh, but, come on. But I, I will say this. I think this is great for fans. I don't think there's a coach in the country that puts a lot of stock in okay. a preseason ranking. We haven't played anybody yet. I mean, we 25 great seniors graduated from our ball club yes. a year ago. We're a different team. So is Coach Saban's team. Now you got to – they deserve that. I would, I would vote them one also. Yeah. But everybody else is chasing him. And where we're at, I think, is great for fans. It's great for everyone to talk about, you and I to talk about. But I'd break everybody in October. Let's see what happens after you've had a whole month of non-conference games and maybe two league games. Now we'll see where everybody's at. You know, it's I, I, I love business, and we talk about it in the show all the time. And what you did at Northwestern, there's no junior college guys. Um, you are you are much like David Shaw at Stanford or down at Vanderbilt. Mm-hmm. You know, you you're, you're have a select group of players that can not only academically but socially fit at Northwestern. It's a remarkable school for those uh, that are, don't understand. It's just north of Chicago, beautiful campus, very academic. How do you do it? Like like the first day you arrive. Sure. Oh, man, you used to play here. We all love him. <laughs> that doesn't mean squat. No. Building blocks. First two or three things you got to do to rebuild the program. Well, number one, it starts in recruiting. You've got to find the right fit. You've got to find a young man that really embodies everything you're looking for. Great student, high character young man off the field who loves football. Uh, I had the great privilege to play for Gary Barnett. We had the great run in the mid-90s, back-to-back Big Ten championships. And, you know, then we wanted to get with Coach Walker in 2000. We need to get back to that level, and how we're doing that is one player at a time. Staff's doing a great job, but our young men are why we are winning. That's the the bread and butter, the core of who we are and what we're all about. I have a theory on this. I'm going to throw the I, – I, I am at times kind of a theorist. I love football. And there's never been a time that Northwestern, Stanford, and Vanderbilt, all high academic achievers, were all simultaneously this good. Sure. And my theory is – is that brains matters more in football than it ever has. The game is moving faster, that the cognizant, cognitive ability of players maybe didn't matter in the 70s, but you're asking players more plays without huddle, that brains matter more in football, and that Stanford, Vanderbilt, and Northwestern now can compete. What do you make of my theory? I would agree that we can compete from a theoretical standpoint. I don't want to go after those guys in the 70s and 80s. Okay. Okay. But I would say I think because of technology, the Internet, and information and transparency, more families understand the importance of really looking at a school and how are you going to impact my son, not just for the next four or five years, but for the next 40 or 50. So you think it's a recruiting issue? I ab- Absolutely. I, I think families are able to really lift up the hood. I mean, back in the mid-90s when I was being recruited, or early 90s, I should say, you had no idea what the facts were. You had to go to your guidance counselor's office, find a book that was somewhere in the corner, to figure out whether or not the school had good graduation rates or not. Now you can get that instantaneously. The transparency in college football is is in a place where it's never been. So I think more families are making educated decisions on, you know, hey, son, if you end up having a great career and going to the NFL, that's a great thing. That's a great plan B. But plan A is life. How are we going to maximize you playing this game, using the football to get you prepared for the rest of your life. Ever steal a guy from the Buckeyes? Ever come down and steal one? Because uh, they would be the favorite in that recruiting battle. Well, sure, for a number of different reasons. Yeah. It, it would be the same thing against anybody throughout the country. We're more looking for our fit. I'm not overly concerned with, hey, who do we beat uh, to get this young man? It's more important, what kind of fit is he going to be to our program? Who is he going to be in our locker room? What's he going to be like on a Tuesday in January in Evanston when there's no cheerleaders, no band, no game day, and he's got to go to a chemistry class is he going to embrace and understand and value what it means to be a Wildcat? I said this to David Shaw. I said that the advantage to being Stanford's coach is, especially in bowl games, you can bring a bigger playbook. You don't have much <laughs> academic attrition. Sure, That's another thing. Stanford never loses a guy because he can't make grades. He may bust his ankle up. Right. But, but can you, because you get a lot of bright kids, can you bring a few more plays to the table? 
Well, do you ask more of your players? No question, but don't confuse academic intelligence for football intelligence. Okay. I, I think young men can pick things up more. There can te- be a tendency of being a little bit over-analytical and, and trying to get a little bit of paralysis by analysis at sure. times. So you, you want to have kids execute. You want to get them to play fast. But but at the end of the day, we do have an advantage. We have a very smart young man. And when you look at our quarterback play over the years, we've been very successful at the quarterback position because our guys are bright. By the way, the Big Ten is often, uh, even on this show, from time to time I've clobbered the Big Ten because they have in recent years eroded and the SEC is elevated. But it, correct me if I'm wrong, but you should have beaten Auburn and you did beat Mississippi State in the bowl game. Yeah, 2-0 and against uh, the SEC a year ago. You know, we're proud of that, but that's last year's team. You know, but that's nice, though. That's well, a big deal. I, I think when you guys talk, it's a huge deal. You know, they all count the same. You know, it, last year uh, we played... Uh, a football championship subdivision team. It's the same win, uh, you know, on the scoreboard as it is against Michigan State in theory. Uh, but we get it. I mean, everybody in the Big Ten, we get it. We understand. I mean, there's certain weekends of the year that it's going to be overanalyzed and scrutinized. Sure. And you want to change your perception? Win football games. So I was, you know, I was doing it in a loving fashion. Vince, wouldn't you say I was loving when I poked fun at Kentucky football? I was being very good natured about it. Yeah, Mark Stoops, you know, the Stoops family. Sure. They, they apparently, according to a report, sent like 180 letters on a day to one player. And I said, that's gross. And so they sent me 50 letters. And I thought it was very funny. And I don't talk Kentucky football much, so they totally get it. But I do wonder if we're going to have the you know, Chicago phone book as an NCAA guide, right. should we not limit an almost grotesque, and I'm not going to pick on any one school anymore, but 180 letters to one kid? Are you comfortable being in a sport where that's part of the recruiting practice? Everybody does their business a little bit unique to their personalities. Uh, we believe it's about building relationships, not having interns or quality control folks writing a note to say that we did that. That's that's not, in our opinion, what's important in the process. Uh, yeah, we have to really look hard at what's going on right now. I'm concerned, you know, looking nationally, the recruiting is going earlier and earlier. Yes, yes. And now we're talking about, Ego inflation. You know, we're taking 15-year-old young men and saying, you're the greatest thing ever as college coaches. And, and, and maybe he is and maybe he isn't. But his high school coach just wants him to show up on time, be a great leader, mm-hmm. be a terrific young man in this community, do a great job academically. But they're being jet-setted all over the country, freshman and sophomore. I, I don't know about you, Colin, but I wasn't a very mature guy. Some question my maturity right now. But at okay. 15, I promise you, I could not have handled that type of ego inflation. There's a lot of us in the country, coaching-wise, that feel like we should really go to an NFL model. Let's push things back. Let's slow it down. The NFL really can't talk to our kids till they've exhausted their eligibility. Yeah. You know, after three years, which would be the after in our business after uh, their senior year, or if they declare early. I like this. I would do the same thing. Yeah. I'd slow it down. Let them go all the way through their senior year. Now let's go out and recruit them. But. You know, we're a little bit further ahead now with this early recruiting process, but I'd I'd like to see us take a look at that now. I think that's a great point. Uh, He is a remarkable coach. He was a heck of a player, Pat Fitzgerald at Northwestern. Big bowl win over an SEC team. Good seeing you. Thanks, Go Cats.